Sighted first in Japan as the J Butterfly, released in the month of November of 2012 in the United States as Verizon's Droid DNA. It's now the HTC Butterfly that makes its way to international markets everywhere. Let's start this review with the differences between the HTC Butterfly and its Verizon brethren. The HTC Butterfly lacks 4G, NFC and wireless charging capabilities, but it does receive a microSD card slot instead. Apart from these differences, bearing some bloatware from Verizon, the Droid DNA and the HTC Butterfly are pretty much the same phone. Spec-wise, the HTC Butterfly is a behemoth that packs a quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon Pro processor clocked at 1.5GHz, an Adreno 320 GPU and 2 gigs of RAM. It has 16 gigs internal storage, of which 11 GB is available for usage. Despite this, what really steals the spotlight here is the Butterfly's gorgeous 5-inch 1080p Super LCD 3 display. Yes, you heard it right, that's 1080p. That's 1920 pixels this way and 1080 pixels this way. All in a 5-inch display that gives the HTC Butterfly a pixel density of 441 pixels per inch. To put this into perspective, Apple's famed Retina display offers a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch on the iPhone 5 and Samsung's flagship Galaxy S3 306 pixels per inch. Some might argue that this is a marketing gimmick and the human eye cannot discern any differences in pixel density over 300 pixels per inch. Well, I'll just put the HTC Butterfly side by side with the Galaxy S3 and let you guys see for yourselves. The Super LCD 3 used here is very vibrant and bright. Visibility in sunlight is good. The viewing angles are really great and the color reproduction natural. Let's talk a little bit about the build. The HTC Butterfly, just like the One X of last year, has a unibody build and yes, that means no user replaceable battery. Overall, the phone is 143mm tall, 70.5mm wide and 9.1mm thick. In all, while weighing just 140 grams. It's worth noting that the 9.1mm thickness is at its very center and not the edges. And with the way our hand curves while we grip a device, the butterfly actually feels slimmer than the 8.6mm thick Galaxy S3. Again, talking about the Galaxy S3, the butterfly, though it houses a 5-inch Full HD display, is just 6.3mm taller and actually 0.1mm narrower than the Galaxy S3. The width remaining small, despite the display, makes single-handed usage easier. But do keep in mind that the height causes unease when trying to access stuff at the top of the screen. For example, pulling down the notification bar needs constant maneuvering of the phone in hand. Talking about having to constantly maneuver the phone in hand takes us to the button placements. Curiously, HTC has decided to place the power button on the top at the center and with the power button being the only key to wake the device, hitting it is a pain. The power button is flanked by a microphone and 3.5mm headphone jack on one side and a flap covering the micro SIM and micro SD card slot on the other. To the right, we have the volume rockers. Don't let the mesh designs on the sides fool you. It's not the speaker. That was my first impression too. Here, we have the other microphone and micro USB port which is again covered with a flap. Both the flaps covering the micro SIM, micro SD slot and the micro USB port are a little hard to pull out. But I guess that's the price to pay for a splash resistant device. And yes, the HTC Butterfly is indeed splash resistant. In the front, we have the speaker grill, the sensors, an HTC logo and a wide angle 2.1 megapixel camera. What that means is the front camera captures a lot more now compared to other front cameras like the one found on the HTC One X. The front camera is also capable of shooting 1080p videos at 30 frames per second. That is an amazing improvement. The 5 inch Full HD Super LCD 3 display is covered by the scratch resistant Corning Gorilla Glass 2. Down at the bottom we have the three capacitive keys that HTC has adopted since Ice Cream Sandwich the back, the home and the open apps keys. They are well spaced and easy to use. At the back we have a second notification light. This can be useful if you place your phone face down a lot but if you do have your phone by your bedside the notification light can get annoying quick. Yes you can turn off the notification light 
but that means having to turn off both lights since individual notification light control isn't available yet. Here's to hoping HTC fixes this with a future update. Next we have the 8 megapixel rear shooter. This is a similar camera to the one found on the HTC One X and that is praise in itself since the One X had arguably the best camera in an Android device in 2012. The colors are natural and low light performance is acceptable. On the software side you get the same options as the One X. Full HD video at 30 frames per second, burst mode, slow motion video and the ilk. The video quality is also pretty good. This is a video that I shot earlier in the day. And now with the 1080p Super LCD 3 display of the HTC Butterfly, you can play back and watch the videos you shot in their full HD glory right there on your phone. Tap and hold the shutter button when you want to take a picture and it shoots pictures at a furious pace. Yes, this is now a standard with all top end phones. But where HTC sets itself apart is that HTC sets the best photo as a default option so every time you use burst mode, you get an option to save only the best pic and delete the rest. This is not a default option on other phones uh, from competitors like Samsung with the Galaxy S3 and the Note 2. This helps reduce the overall clutter in your phone's albums. You can also shoot videos and capture full 8 megapixel photos simultaneously just like with the One X. HTC still remains the only manufacturer to provide the option of turning the flash on or off while shooting a video. In the middle, we have the HTC branding and lower yet, the Beats Audio logo with the speaker grill. The HTC Butterfly has an amplifier for both the headphones and the speaker and thus the audio output is loud but clear. Beats Audio can be used with third party apps as well and improves the bass considerably. I'm no audiophile but I'm pretty impressed with the sound quality here. The call quality is also equally impressive with no dropped calls experienced. So far we've touched on some software aspects, but now let's take a closer look. Well, even before you turn your butterfly on, actually, even before you order your phone, there are some options that HTC provides you with. You can customize your home screens, add widgets, choose your ringtones and wallpapers, select from a few preset apps, and even sign into some services like Dropbox, all before you even turn your device on. How do you do it? Head on over to start.htc.com butterfly, create an account, follow the instructions and customize your phone all you want. Once you get your butterfly, turn it on and when it says apply settings from web, tap it and sign in and all your customizations will be applied. I really love the fact that HTC has gone the extra mile here. It's a great idea. The HTC Butterfly runs Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean out of the box with HTC Zone Sense 4 Plus overlay on top. Everything feels buttery smooth. Despite the 1080p display, the Snapdragon Pro keeps everything running along smoothly. Apps open quick, there isn't any sluggishness of frame rate drops. The Butterfly has even been able to handle any game that I've thrown at it, but to be honest I haven't really tried that many. Sense 4 Plus is a clean and almost unobtrusive interface. It comes with all of Google's apps, Twitter and Facebook. The contact integration, as always with HTC, is great. Sense 4 Plus also offers quite a good deal of customization. You can change your wallpapers, your skins, lock screens and a lot more. You can even save your home screen configuration, try something new and return back to the original configuration. Sense 4 Plus also supports some gesture controls like two fingers for letter-wise scrolling and three fingers to launch Media Link HD. We also get the new and improved gallery. Now we can access photos from Dropbox, Facebook, Flickr, Picasa and SkyDrive right from the gallery app. Going into my phone lists all the, uh, all the photos on the phone. And now, apart from the regular albums view, we also get the events view. So what this does is sorts your photos as per the date they were taken. This is a handy little addition. You can also check where they were taken by using the maps option there. One negative when it comes to Sense 4 Plus is that there are no quick toggles available. This is something that HTC used to have in the past. Right now you get the option for power saver off and with the dry DNA you get the Wi-Fi uh, toggle over here. But apart from that there are no quick toggles. This is something that Samsung has with TouchWiz 
and even Google has seemed to acknowledge that people want the quick toggles and have given that as part of the Android 4.2 update. Hopefully when the butterfly gets the Android 4.2 update, the quick toggles should be included. As of now, if you want to turn Wi-Fi on or off or mobile data on or off, you need to go into settings and then turn it off from here and it is a little bit of a chore. Battery life is very important for any phone. Sense 4 Plus on the HTC Butterfly lets you check what's currently using up your battery and also your historical data. Battery life on the HTC Butterfly is okay. It's not really bad but it's not great either. It is definitely better than with the HTC One X. It seems that the Snapdragon Pro used here optimizes battery usage much better than the Tegra 3. The 2020 mAh battery of the HTC Butterfly gets me through a day with moderate usage. My moderate usage involves a couple of hours of listening to music via Bluetooth, uh, an hour of gaming or watching videos, an hour or two of calls, with Wi-Fi or 3G running in the background at all times. While numbers are not everything, we did run a couple of popular benchmarks. The HTC Butterfly scored strongly on both Antutu and Quadrant Standard. Alright guys, time for the verdict. Well, the HTC Butterfly is a great device, it's amazing, it's blazing fast, it's got a kick-ass processor, it's got 2 gigs of RAM, an amazing camera, it's got a very very gorgeous 5 inch full HD Super LCD 3 display. And uh, you know, if you're in the market today and you want to get the top of the line device, the top end device, the best one, the one that annihilates everything else in benchmarks, then the HTC Butterfly is the device for you. But then again, if I were you, I'll wait at least another couple of weeks. Uh, you know, I'm making this video in the start of March, so wait a couple of weeks, see what the HTC One and the Galaxy S4 has in store before going ahead and picking this device up. Again guys, uh, you know the timing of the international release uh, which was the end of February is a little questionable here you know because the HTC One is coming out this month and uh, uh, it seems like HTC doesn't really want to sell the butterfly but then again the butterfly is an amazing device I mean the name, I don't, I don't really like the name HTC butterfly I don't want to go around telling people I've got a butterfly sounds weird uh, but then again it's seriously a solid device you know one that uh, is really worth the $900 that they're charging internationally. Uh, but then again, what's questionable here is that for a, for a device that demands a $900 premium, uh, I seriously don't see why wireless charging and NFC couldn't have been included. Uh, again, this is just a little minor gripe because wireless charging and NFC are in things we can't live without. But then again, we find it on a $250 uh, Nexus 4. So these questions apart, the device again is really really good and if you're in the market today and for some reason don't want to wait for the uh, HTC One or the Galaxy S4, go ahead get this, you cannot really go wrong with it. It is an amazing device, well worth the investment. So that's pretty much it guys uh, 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 and uh, if you're somebody who wants to wait for the HTC One or the Galaxy S4 and want to compare it with, this, uh, uh, with the HTC Butterfly before you make a decision. Stay subscribed because I will be coming out with comparisons with both the HTC One as well as the Galaxy S4. So that's pretty much it guys. Thanks a lot for watching and for the full written review head on over to cursepower.com and before you go make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons and if you guys want to pick up either the HTC Butterfly or the Droid DNA you can order them from Amazon.com by clicking the links in the description. And if you guys do want to help me out if there's anything that you want to order online and if you can order it from Amazon.com just go through to Amazon by using my links in the description. Just use Amazon as you would always do. Just search for what you want, order it. Every time you guys go through my links and place an order, I tend to make a few cents to a few bucks. So that is if you guys do want to help me out. So that's pretty much it guys. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and once again before you go, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. And this is Ashio from CurseFarber.com signing off. I'll see you guys soon with more videos. Till then you guys have a great day. Bye bye now.